Greetings survivors and friends, Shadowfax here with a recap for you of everything in this month's big patch to Rust, and well the team have done it again it seems, another month and another monthly patch, which of course unless you've been hiding inside Bradley during the pandemic, you'll know this month is all about the HDRP backport, which isn't actually HDRP, but is a backport, meaning a big visual overhaul to feast your peepers on. Just waiting for all the future comments about how much better 2020 Rust looked. Now, I have of course covered this in detail over the last couple of months, so for more information please re-watch those vids, but to give a quick recap, there have been visual changes to virtually everything natural, procedural generations been tweaked to infinity, monuments have changed a lot, some more than others, and cliffs are completely new, including a free optical illusion, which is quite clever really, you may find some areas that look climbable but aren't. This will be addressed in the next patch, I'm told. But in the meantime, Face Punch are offering free replacement space bars. Link in the description if you want to claim yours. A couple of the biggest monument changes are as follows. Firstly, the bandit camps received a bit of an initial performance boost with a number of tweaks. I went into exactly what changed last week, but as well as being less likely to peel your potato, it's important to note that there's now an extra recycler here. The biggest monument change though has to be a total rehaul of the junkyard, which includes a crane and shredder mini game. Seriously, it's just like being at the seaside, except this crane picks things up reliably and you get to destroy the prizes. This setup is now fully functional, so here are a few new facts you need to absorb into your brain sack. Firstly, you'll need fuel to run it, so bring some. The crane also has headlights, which are bound to F. You can drive it around, pick up and shred both junk cars that spawn here and any modular ones that you bring to the yard. The materials you get in return depending on which modules are attached and which are, of course, all subject to change. Please note, you can only scrap cars, no other vehicles, not helis, nor boats, nor nothing. Also, this should work, but doesn't, although there are plenty of opportunities for industrial accidents here if you're not careful. Just like in the real world, magnet cranes are very delicate. This one only has 500 HP and will automatically and rapidly receive damage if you take it beyond the Great Seal. See, told you they'd nerf that. Also, cranes will respawn five to ten minutes after being destroyed. On to other changes. Foundations now cause bush displacement. Well, removal, as they will be gone forever, but will respawn somewhere else, meaning there will always be the same number of bushes on a server, and I guess depending on how many bases there are, some areas could end up very bushy indeed. Nvidia Reflex now works with Rust. You can enable it in the options menu, and this means if you have a GTX 900 series card or newer, you could get up to a 38% reduction in input latency. Wow. Pay to win. Gestures now work whilst mounted. Nice. Being able to see player alt look head movements back. Rainbows have been disabled, at least until the visuals can be sorted out a bit better. And the jib pooling work I spoke about before was merged, which should help performance a bit, but probably nothing noticeable. There were a whole deck of poker fixes, a few hitch and trough improvements, which I went into in a previous vid, and as mentioned last week, the Happis Island map is temporarily being removed, but will be back after it's had a facelift to bring it up to the new backport standard. This should take a few weeks, but I'm sure it will be worth the wait. Also this week sees the introduction of a new wave of Twitch drops, and I'll leave a link to the page for you below. The console edition is due to launch later this month on May the 21st, and also later this month details of a community map making contest will be announced could see some official encouragement for this type of thing. In works in progress, there's still tons of work going on with the new AI, which is also tied in with the new animal models, so I expect these will be hitting at the same time, whenever that will be. There was a fix for players keeping their eyes open and blinking whilst asleep, which is never not creepy. This commit made me far more excited than it had any right to, but as I like making spaghetti junctions with the electrical system, I'm very pleased to see that we'll be able to colour code our cables at some point. And lastly, a new prefab's being worked on for the solar panel to make it fit in with everything else. This is of course purely visual, and therefore everything else about it is not subject to change. Right, well that's all I've got for you today. Leave me a comment and let me know how you're getting on, either in game or just in general, I don't mind. Like and subscribe please, but that goes without saying. And why not? Follow me on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, Discord and my Steam group because it'll make you feel good. Also, if you feel like supporting me even more directly, you can do so via Patreon or my merch store. All the links down below. I shall catch you all soon, but in the meantime, keep calm and stay rusty. Cheerio. This video is 
powered by AWDIT's producer range of workstation PCs, available now at awdit.co.uk. Which is never not creepy. <laughs>